Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning to our students online as well. Let's begin this time with a word of prayer. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this time, Lord. And even as we learn from your word, we pray, Holy Spirit, that you will teach us, you will minister to our hearts, O oh God. Lord, that you will bring clarity in everything that we study, Lord, that you will, Lord, enable us to understand and to apply everything that we learn in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so last class we looked at chapter 4, Overcoming Inhibitions, when it comes to sharing the gospel. Now we will have a lot of inhibitions. We looked at about six or more, like not knowing what to say, uh, feeling that nobody is interested in the gospel, a fear of rejection, ridicule, um, being ashamed, a fear of mixing with unsaved friends. Sometimes we feel it's not my responsibility, it's not my personality. Or we may feel that you know people may ask difficult questions, and I don't know have all the answers. Remember, we won't know all the answers, all right? But you always give that option to uh, you know to to let them know that you know I don't know the answer, but I would like to come back and give you details on that. All right? If there's anyone here. Okay, so let's get into chapter 5. Chapter 5 is, now we have understood that, you know, all of us will have inhibitions, right? Things that we, that, that can stop us from sharing the gospel. Now, it will take time to overcome that, but our goal is to overcome those inhibitions, right? Whatever it is, whatever the reason we may have to stop sharing the gospel, we have to overcome that. Yes or no? Yes, right? It may take time. It may not take, it may happen immediately, but we have to overcome it. You have to deal with it. Yes? See, for like I shared with you, I'm an introvert. I don't go and talk to many people. But if I have to be preaching every Sunday, what should I do? I have to go on in front. I can't sit in the side there and preach. I have to overcome the fear of being on stage. I have to overcome it. I have to ask God to give me the strength and give me the Holy Spirit to give, give me the power, give me the, uh, the grace to stand in front of people and preach. And practically, I have to take the step. So the same way when it comes to evangelism and ministering to people, we may have many reasons why I can't do it, but we'll have to overcome it. This is called stepping out of your comfort zone. We all are comfortable doing things, but when it comes to ministry, we may have to step out of our comfort zone. Okay. Now, after we do this, how do we get started when it comes to evangelism when it comes to sharing the gospel with people number one ask leading questions now sometimes you and i feel that ministry is more about talking we should keep talking preaching sharing right not always it is also very important for us to understand that it's it's also a time of listening so ask, learn to ask good questions. Now, the problem is, you know, many times I, I see a, some few young people, right? They ask questions. Some of those questions are not even good biblical questions. I'm not saying here, but I'm just saying because they haven't read the Bible. The question itself is not proper. It's not even a good question. So. When you and I are in ministry, we must learn to ask good questions, appropriate questions. Right? Learn to ask questions which make the other person think, why is he asking that question? Now, if you look at the scriptures, look at Jesus' ministry. He asked a lot of questions. Yes or no? I need some reaction. Thank you. 
he asks questions, right? Can you give me one example? Anyone? One example? Asking, he asks good questions. Jesus himself. Wherever Jesus spoke, he gave, wherever it was, people gave questions. He, he answered with a question. Nine out of ten times. Example. Is it good to pay taxes? Did he respond yes or no? Did he respond with a yes or no? What is what was his response? He asked another question. You know, we, next semester you'll have the topic on apologetics. It's to give a defense for the gospel. A good minister of God will be able to answer a question and ask a question, a good question in response. Now, what, what is happening? If I if somebody asks me a question and I ask them a good question, I understand why are they asking that question. So, for example, somebody comes up to me and says, Why do you believe in Jesus? Now I can answer by saying one, two, three, four, five, six, give a lot of points. But I can also answer saying, Tell me who should I believe in? Now, what, what is the difference? Good. Prem says that person gets into thinking, who, why is he, why, who, who should I he believe then? So now he's asking me, why do you believe in Jesus? I'm asking him, tell me who I should believe in. Uh, he may say a certain person or some faith. Now it gives me the opportunity to make a difference. What is the difference in Christianity? What is the difference in this faith? Now I'm not putting the other religion down. I'm just showing the difference. But it gives me an opportunity to share. Right? You get what I'm saying? What did Jesus say in response? Should we pay taxes? Whose face do you see? Simple. They answer the question. We see Caesar's face. You give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. You give to God what belongs to God. Simple. Who told you that on, on a Sabbath you can heal? Did Jesus respond? Remember, they brought the paralytic. The paralytic was there. Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. Rise up, take your mat and walk. The Pharisees and all the rulers are standing there. And say, Who told you to heal on, on a Sabbath day? What was Jesus' response? Did he say, I am the Sabbath. I will do what I feel like doing. I'm the Messiah. Nothing. What did he say? If you have so many sheep, one of them get lost or they fall into a well, will you not? Will you go and save it or not? Yes, we will. Then same thing I did. This man is in bound by the devil, and I healed him. So, as as believers, as ministers, and and students of God's word, we must learn to ask good questions, and the. Point here, it says leading questions. That means ask questions where you will get a response back to lead you to share the gospel with them. And I love doing this with people from other faiths, especially if it's Islam. No, I love to ask questions. I, 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 I dialogue with them, ask them, what is, what is Ramadan? I just ask, what is Ramadan? Some people don't know what is Ramadan. But they're fasting. So what is Ramadan? So they'll say, you know, this is a feast. Okay, what do you believe in this? Now you're going on asking questions. So you don't eat for 40 days. No, no, we eat. What time? Four o'clock in the morning. So you eat. So it's not full fasting. No, it's not full fasting. So what's happening now? He's, I'm asking questions. I'm leading all the questions. For him to think about his faith, which gives me the opportunity to talk about my faith. Understand that? Right? So, I can ask a person from another faith. Right? What is this whole festival of lights about? Everyone, you know, Diwali, what is it about? Well, it's bursting crackers. But what's the meaning of it? 
right? We, we must, you know, if, if you're from different faiths, I'm sure you will know better. But we need to understand what, what is the reason for this festival to come for? What is the main reason? Why is this festival there? So you ask leading questions, right? Now, we must understand that even more important is knowing how to listen. I always say this, knowledge speaks, wisdom listens. Knowledge, when we have a lot of knowledge, you know, we keep speaking. But wisdom listens. So sometimes we have to sit and listen to what people say when it comes to ministering one-on-one. -on -one. Whether you agree or no, that's secondary. You have, to, you have to learn and develop the ability to be patient and listen. Right? The mistake that we make is sometimes we are in a hurry and we just say whatever we feel like saying. Right? We must learn and develop the ability to be patient. Learning about a person's perspective and past may powerfully affect how we witness. Now, if, for example, I know a person is from, from another faith. I know he's maybe, let's take Islam, for example, right? He's a Muslim, right? And I know he's from this faith. And I try to understand his perspective, right? Why does he go for Friday prayers? Why does he say the Shahada? Why does he fast for 40 days? What is Bakrid all about, all these festivals? So I try to understand his perspective. What is his scriptures talking about? Just a basic understanding. And then that will lead me to witness in a better way. One of the main questions I ask is, is there forgiveness of sins? Number one question. And we look at the difference of, uh, in faith in Hinduism and Islam. But one question that we can ask is, is there forgiveness of sins? The Hindu faith, they have places like Varanasi, they have places where they go and they, uh, you know, they, they do things for their sins to be forgiven. Islam, again, they have Mecca and Medina where they go to this place and they do things for forgiveness. So it was all about works. So then if I'm, if I, I'm speaking to one of them, one of, you know, either a Muslim or a Hindu, first thing I ask is, is there forgiveness of sins? They'll say, we are not sure, 100% sure. The answer is, we are not sure if there's forgiveness of sins. Now, you can bring in the cross. You bring in why, what, what is sin? How did sin come into this world? And how did God bring in the cross? And through the cross, there's forgiveness of sins. Now, here's the important thing. Are you convinced first? Are you convinced that your sins are forgiven? Are you convinced that the cross is real? And are you convinced that you're walking in the resurrection power of the cross? If you are convinced, then you will share it boldly. If you are doubtful, then you will be doubtful. You know, have you heard of children you know, where the teachers will say, did you do your homework? And your homework, your book is here. Did you do your homework? The student says, yes. Teacher will ask again, did you do your homework? Second time, same question. That yes will become a little softer. Third time, did you do your homework? That yes will become even more softer. Last time, did you do your homework? No. From yes has become no. Now that's not our the way we deal with in terms of ministry you must be assured that this is what jesus did for me by the cross my sins are forgiven and only then you will be able to talk about it to others one of the models that we always talk about in ministry is first practice then preach if i am preaching without practicing what i'm doing i have failed I have to practice. If I am telling you 
sacrifice and pray and spend time more in God's presence. If I'm not doing it, I'm just preaching. You've heard that saying, no, in Hindi. What's that saying? I forget that saying, but it's it's like this person only talks. He doesn't do anything. Right? What? Bol bache. Bol bache. Okay. Okay, whatever that is. This guy only talks. Have you seen people like that? They have big talks, but no works. So in when it comes to ministering to others, asking questions, you must be convicted. You must, you and I must do the work and then serve. Now, if we believe that the cross is real, if you have witnessed yourself, you have seen your life change after becoming a believer, you will be able to share the gospel with others. Let me give this example. When we were in the city of Mangalore, right? There is this there was this elderly couple, 85 and 87 years old. Right? Now, she, the the person, the woman who's 85, she they were they are part of our church. The way she would minister to people was very, very powerful. Very simple woman. But you know what she'll do? She do she'll she'll come out of church, she'll be waiting for her husband to bring the car out. So in the meanwhile, she'll be standing and people are passing by, she'll say, Hold on. Let me tell you about Jesus. And she shares the gospel. Wherever she is, she's in the supermarket, she'll share the gospel. She she's in another place, she'll share the gospel. To the milk vendor, to the newspaper guys, whoever, whoever, you know who comes for her Bible study? All, maybe about 15 of them, all of them are from other faiths. She doesn't allow believers to come. This is only for those who have from other faiths who have become believers. Now she's 87 years old and she's doing this. She's still doing it. The reason is because she's convinced of what Jesus has, did in, has done in her life. Right? So that there are different levels of conversation where different questions become appropriate. Now, look at the first level. Level one, getting to know the person. Now, you all are first year students. Do each of you know your, each other's names? Where are you from? Not, not yet. That means you only know the name and you're happy. But there's a level where you get to know the person, where he's from, what did he study, where's his home, what, what, who stays in his home, his parents, siblings, whatever, right? What he likes to do, how he likes to spend his time. So these are questions, leading questions that you can ask. So, so if you're meeting somebody new, you want to share the gospel, you have the opportunity, these are questions you can ask. What do you do? Now, don't go directly and ask, do you know what Moses did in, in Exodus chapter 5? Don't do those things. Right? Or do you, do you know how Jesus died on the cross? They put two nails here, one nail at his feet. Don't go into all those explanations. First, get to know the person. Simple, basic communication is what is needed. Right? What do you do? Where do you study? Or where do you work? Right? Um, how do you spend your time? What are your hobbies? Now, out of these questions will come, you know, opportunities for us to ask good questions. So, for example, it says, what are your hobbies? Someone says, you know what? I don't really have a hobby, but I want to learn music. Now, gives me an opportunity. First thing I'll say is, what do you want to learn? I, I like keyboard. Okay, keyboard. So these are things that I've learned. I know a little bit of music. So this is what I have learned. Right? But I can teach you some more if you're interested. These are, you know, the learning keyboard, it takes time. So what am I doing? I'm building a relationship. Through what? Through hobbies. Now, I've not quoted scripture. The grace of God 
the anointing of god will come upon you you can use the gift for god's kingdom all that is not required i have just started communicating with that person right or it could be what do you do i'm studying i'm in i'm in i'm a science student science okay i did commerce so this is what i learned what are you doing you're just building a conversation right now don't ask questions which is which makes no sense do you have two bedroom house or three bedroom house that's not required yes or no ask questions that make sense right questions okay then you get to know their belief system now they may be from other faith but sometimes they may not even believe in god right sometimes people are very spiritual sometimes people are not spiritual there's a difference right now for example if you look at ramadan season there's 40 days of fasting not all muslims follow it but those who are really spiritual they follow it not all hindus follow all the festivals they don't but those who are very spiritual they follow it so we get to know whether this person is spiritual or not now why is this important because if it if they are spiritual you can bring in the right questions if they are not spiritual we can ask them the right questions there again right then you can ask have you ever been to church now the answer will be yes or no if it's yes good you know, which which church how did you like it what was your experience like no i didn't like it at all i went there and this it was every the loud music was so loud and then one man came he started preaching something i didn't understand anything now what should our response be you don't get angry how can you talk about church don't say because you didn't listen to the sermon you should understand the person where he's coming from right you say okay so why don't you try it one more time maybe you can come with me i'll help you to understand what church is all about you know what they're singing about uh, what is the preaching happening about right so you're helping him to understand or you may get a response saying no i don't really like church i've never gone to a church i'm not interested then you move on right but you can always keep it as an option to you know for him to you know or just share the gospel with him if there's an option if not just move on okay a question like when you were studying did anyone tell you about jesus this is a very interesting question as a young person as as a young boy or a young girl did you hear about jesus did anyone share with you about jesus now the answer is yes or the answer is no right so uh, remember that person that i shared the gospel with in varanasi there's a simple I mean, I didn't ask this question, but he heard about Jesus when he was in school. You forgot that story. You remember that story or no? Okay. He heard about Jesus when he was in school. He was studying in a convent school. But the Holy Spirit used that to minister to him. Right? So you can ask... Um, Oh, when you were when you were younger, did anyone tell you about Jesus? What do you think about Jesus? What do you think about God? Now we love Jesus. Oh, he's so good. But for others, they don't like Jesus. They don't want to anything to do with Jesus. Or they don't like the cross. They don't like death. Why should someone die for others to live? Right? Maybe many things. So we must be able to ask these questions what do you think about god now why is this question important when you ask what do you think about god the person will say whether he believes or doesn't believe if he doesn't believe gives you an opportunity to share if he believes gives you an opportunity again to share right and then you can ask what do you think about afterlife do you believe in heaven or hell all nine out of ten faiths have something to do with this right heaven or hell right. then you can always you know what do you think about evil in this world and one person came and asked me many years ago i 
I don't believe in God because there is so much evil in this world. That is a standard question that people have, right? Why should innocent people die? Why should babies and children die? Where is God when all of this is happening? There is no God. It's very easy to ask these questions. But you and I must be ready to answer these kind of questions. Right? How do you answer these kind of questions? We know that, you know, after sin, the world is, the, the, you know, the Bible says that Satan has taken over the world. He, he moves in such a way. He has the power to, uh, you know, to influence people's lives. But this is what Jesus did for us. This is what we do when we believe in Jesus. That even if there is death, it's not the end. And even if it's no death, God is a God who can supernaturally protect us. So we're bringing in the gospel by asking simple questions. How many of you in your church who you celebrate Good Friday? Right? You all have Good Friday, right? Good Friday service. Most of the churches. Now, how many of you have invited somebody to your church on Good Friday? How did you do it? Pa pamphlet? Okay, what else? Anyone personally invited? You? Okay, who else? Yeah. That's good, right? Good Friday is a very good time to invite people to church. People may ask, what is this Good Friday all about? What, why is it good? What's about this Friday? And you begin to share about the cross, right? Directly. Because they are asking the question. What about Easter Sunday? Christmas? Right? Christmas is a wonderful time. You know, this, let me share this. We used to go to IT parks all across Bangalore. Right, and we got the permission, so we used to go to about six or seven IT parks. We used to have Christmas concert, then we would share a Christmas message, and we keep some of our publications, and people were free to take it and go. So, you know, during the breaks, people used to gather. Remember this one time we we finished the Christmas carols, and I was just sharing about the Christmas message. And they, you know, they're all standing. But there was this one person who was very intently listening. So after sharing everything, I went and I spoke to him and I asked him, What do you do? You know, same simple questions, right? Which office do you work in? What is your role? And he was going on talking to me. And then somewhere down the line in that conversation, he mentioned that you know he had lost his parents, he was going through a lot of grief. And he was not finding any hope in life. Right? He was very broken in life. And he was from a Hindu faith. So he said, what is it that you preached? You said about Jesus, he came into this world. I never heard of it. I always thought Christmas was a tree and uh, you know people give gifts to each other. But when you shared that you know God came into this world, he became a human being as a baby and he lived a perfect life and we are celebrating his birth because through his birth we will live right and you, you shared this message i didn't understand but there's something that really spoke to my heart at that moment i knew that the holy spirit is ministering to me to him so he said i've got to go back to work but i'll meet you here if you're okay i'll meet you here at five o'clock now we had already finished all our equipment were there, right? Guitars, keyboards, sound system, everything. It was uh, somewhere around two o'clock. What do I do till five, five o'clock? He said his work finishes at five o'clock. Now, if I say no, I'll meet you another day, I may miss the opportunity. So I said, all the team, pack your bags, go. I waited there for three hours. I said, okay, don't worry, I'm here. Uh, so I waited. He came. Five o'clock, he came. I began to share the gospel with him began to explain to him, what is Christmas all about? What did Jesus do? Why we celebrate Christmas and why this, you know, he asked me, why is the Christmas tree there? Why is the star there? Star I could explain, Christmas tree and all I couldn't explain to him. But the point is, I was able to share the gospel with him. And he gave his life to Christ right there. The thing is, you know, I didn't even tell him he just pray with me. He said, can you pray that I can find this hope, that hope that you have? He knelt down 
in the you know in the open space in the IT park he knelt down we both knelt down and we prayed and he gave his life to Christ what was the message two minutes about Christmas two minutes message I gave him a Bible I said you read this and you can call me anytime if you have any questions right and he's doing very well now I, he's in the ministry, full-time ministry now, right? So, this two-minute message can change a person's life, right? So you can invite people, whether it's Easter, Christmas, and they can, you know, really experience Christ that way. So first way is asking questions. Second one is the prayer approach. Now, many of them, many of us, when we, we know that are going through problems, Problems are a part of everybody's life. Yes or no? Whether you're Christian, Hindu, Muslim, Jain, Sikh, doesn't matter. Everyone has problems. And everyone wants solutions to problems. Doctors can only provide a small solution. We thank God for doctors. But when it comes to the impossible, doc now, for example, doctors can, you know, somebody is grieving. There's a loss of a loved one. The doctor will come and give you counseling. It, will the pain go? They'll give you one medicine. Will the pain go? That is some a pain that is inside. That is where prayer comes into place. So you ask the person his or her difficulties. It could be a financial need, a health need, problem in the family. What is your need? Can I pray for you? Now, example, I remember this long time back. We, I had gone to visit a family uh, in the hospital. And I saw this mother was carrying like a one-year-old child in the hospital. I was waiting to go into the ICU to pray for one of our church folks. This mother is carrying a one-year-old child. And that child is continuously crying. Not even a minute stopping. And the mother is just holding this one-year-old boy. He's crying and he started pulling her hair and, and she's crying and he's screaming and shouting and everyone was saying, please try to handle your child. He was just screaming and she doesn't know what to do. So I remember going up to her and asking her, what happened? Why is, why is he crying? No, he's got a little bit of a problem. What the problem is, he doesn't like bright lights. If it's bright lights, he gets angry, he gets upset. And two, if he wants something, if you don't give it to him, for the next one hour or two hours, he'll scream and cry. He asked for some chocolate or something. His mother said no, and he was screaming and shouting for more than half an hour that I was there. And I said to her, right? Can I pray for you? She said, please pray. Now, did she say who you're praying for? Who's the God you're praying? All that she didn't ask. Can I pray for you? She said, yes, pray. Please pray for my son. Right now, I knew that she was, she's a Hindu. She had all those, you know. So I, I just prayed a simple prayer. I said, God, let's pray that you will comfort this child. We don't know what he's going through. You know, children are not able to say what they what's going on in their life. So uh, pray your comfort over them. Make him calm. Pray for the mother who is going through a difficult time. Everyone are shouting, and she's going through a difficult time. She's crying. May your peace be with her. Very simple prayer. Couple of minutes. Right? But he was still screaming and shouting. But after some time, the child kept quiet. She went into her uh, you know, to meet with the doctor. And then I went. And then when I came out, she was standing there with this child. I said, is he feeling okay? I said, yes. Do you know what? Today, after we went in, today, after one more than a year, is the first time he said, Mama. First time in one year. And she said, tell me what you did. Said, see, this is what I prayed. This is what this is who I believe in. Right? I believe in Jesus. I prayed in Jesus' name. 
This is what he can do. And I began to share with her right, what, what the gospel is all about. I was speaking in broken Kannada, right, but I was able to share with her. Eventually, she was so happy. She said, I want to know more about Jesus. So immediately I connected her to a pastor who speaks in Kannada, who can lead her. And eventually the pastor called after, I think it was about one month or so, she became a believer. She had to move out of the house because they threw her out of the house. She became a believer. See, when we pray for people, when we deal with the problems, God will supernaturally make a way. Right? There will be needs for jobs, or you can pray for people's plans. Right? They have future plans. Now, when a person says yes, can I pray for you? If a person says yes, they are authorizing God to come in all his power and change things in his life. Because we are praying in Jesus' name. There can be bondages, there can be works of the enemy, all of that can break by just one single prayer. Right? By hearing you pray, they can witness how a personal relationship with God works. Now think of this. Stephen was being stoned. Right? What does Stephen do? He says, look, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of the Father. Now, the Bible says Saul was standing there giving authority to this, giving approval to this. Now, Saul of Tarsus, he would have seen what happened and I'm sure something went into his heart. Who prays when they're being stoned to death? He's praying. Look at that relationship he has. I don't believe in that Jesus is the Messiah, but there is something about Stephen. When you and I pray in Jesus' name, when we pray, when we have praying for people's needs, they see the relationship that you and I have with God the Father. Right? And they, that can impact their lives through the Holy Spirit. Be open, even as you're praying, be open to words of knowledge and prophecies. Be open to the gift of healing. Right? Ask the Holy Spirit to give you that gift when you're praying for people. Now, here's the thing. We need to expect for miracles to happen. If I don't expect, it may not happen. If I'm praying for somebody from another faith, and that person is going through a sickness, or he's going through a problem, I must expect for a miracle. If I don't expect, then I may not see anything happening. I must be willing to ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you do what you have to do here. If it's healing, if it's a word of knowledge, if it's a prophecy, give it so that they can, their lives will be touched. Right? Taking the prayer approach could lead to subsequent opportunities to keeping the door open and sharing the gospel even more. Right? So I think this is a very convenient approach. Right? Can I pray for you? Now, there are times when I have asked people, can, can I pray for you? They said, no, thank you. I don't believe in God. It's happened, right? So it's okay. Just move on. Right? Go to the next person. Uh, but this is one way that we can share the gospel. Okay, thirdly, the two-minute testimony approach. This we've already looked at, your life when, before you met Christ, how and why you received Christ, and the changes that, appeared in your, that happened in your life. Now, let's go to the fourth one, right? The power encounter approach. This is an approach that we must take. Power encounter. Healing, word of knowledge, prophecy, and miracles. Power encounter. Now, here's the, here's the thing that I want to share. Very important. Only if we have the power, we can give it to others. Yes or no? If, we don't have, if you have nothing, what will you give? Nothing. If you and I have the power of the Holy Spirit walking in the anointing of the Holy Spirit, only if we have it, we can give to others. Right? So, this is a place where we must prepare ourselves. Lord, fill us with power. Fill us with your anointing. Fill us with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That when I go out, when I minister to people, Healing, signs, wonders, miracles, prophecies, word of knowledge should become a common aspect in my life. 
Now, people have asked me, how is it that you are able to you know, just go to people randomly and share the gospel? You know why? Because I know the gospel says it's the power of God unto salvation. How is it that you get these prophecies and this word of knowledge? How does it come to you? I don't know. All I know is I go and I read the word of God. I spend time in God's presence. And I know that when I have filled myself in God's presence, it will overflow. As simple as that. And of course, I begin to learn how to flow in the gifts of the Spirit. My first thing that I do every day, waking up, is I pray, God, anoint me with the power of your Holy Spirit. Because without the anointing, I cannot do what I am doing now. I cannot be in ministry. I cannot teach. I cannot preach. I cannot lead worship. I cannot do all of this in my own strength. I need the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So that's, that's my prayer every day. This is something that we must also do. Now, when we go back to our, to our churches, some of you are going to become pastors. Some of you are going to become church leaders. Or some of you are going to take over your, your uh, you know, other churches. Now, you need the power of the Holy Spirit. Cannot do it without that. If we try to lead a church, or if you try to lead in ministry in your own strength, you will fail big time. I'm not discouraging you. I'm not uh, putting you down. But I'm saying what I'm saying is, we cannot do it on our own strength. We need the power of the Holy Spirit, and so the power encounter ap approach enables us to be bold and strong to do the work of the ministry. Everyone with me? Right? So now we have the supernatural hour. Right? Now what I've noticed is many of you may have, you all have got you know, visions and a prophetic word, prophecies and all of these things. That's very good. Now you've got to build on that. You've got to go back and pray and say, God, give me something more. I need more of this. I need more of that anointing. Or if, if, you, if you've been called to do worship, lead worship or preach, Lord, I need more of your anointing. And when I preach, when I teach, it should touch people's lives. People's sh lives should be transformed. Their hearts should change. Now, that's not going to come automatically. We have to spend time, and God fills us with his power. The power and counter approach this is the most, you know, it, it, this approach will really... It's like, it's like the picture of an army. Right? You and I are the army of God. We put on the armor of God. Ephesians 6 talks about it. It's like we are going against the devil. We are battling against him. We are fighting the devil. That's what it is. It's like the devil is bringing sickness. You're going there as a, as a man of God, as a woman of God. And with the power of the Holy Spirit, you're bringing in the gospel of Jesus Christ, the work of God. If there is, you know, if there is some, you know, people are going through confusion and difficulties, you're bringing in prophecies, word of knowledge by the power of the Holy Spirit. Right? So I want to encourage you, even as we are talking about these ways to evangelize, whether we are doing evangelism or no, we need the power encounter approach. Now, on, on Sundays, you're going to North Church, right? And you're leading the second service, if I'm not wrong. Yes? Now, each one of you must take it as an opportunity to learn. Okay. Now, Lord, if whoever is leading worship or whoever is serving them, God, I want to see. You pray for the church. God, give, bring people. Can God bring people? Yes. yes. God, you bring the people. You bring, Lord, this is the number I want to see. From, from right now, from October to December, before we leave from here, I want to see this many people, Lord. You bring the people. Lead us to the right people. Even as we are doing evangelism, lead us to students, to families, people around that place. Lead us to people where we can share the gospel and bring them to church. Now, 
that's a responsibility that we must do right and then the power encounter approaches it's like you're dealing with a problem you're opening up the heart and you're and you're working there right so next one take the appropriate next steps now when a person becomes a believer we have to guide them through to becoming a disciple right it's not a it's not something like okay i've done my part now the rest is it's your wish no we lead them right we invite the person to uh, commit them commit their life to christ we invite them to pray spend time with god discuss further if there is any questions that they have invite them to life group or small group meetings cell groups invite them regularly to church be there you know if there are conferences and meetings see if you can invite them get them connected to fellowship that means there will be times when uh, you may not be available but you connect them with people who can guide them in their journey with the lord right if a person is keen and more interested you give them more but if a person says you know what i'm not really interested um i came a couple of sundays i liked it but i'm not interested for now that's all right don't push them just step back right because we don't want to force people to believe believing in jesus is a personal choice that they have to make right all we can do is lead them there and right? if they don't want to come back it's all right right just let them go now rules of engagement quickly we look at this show genuine love and care don't treat people as projects today i have shared with three people project a b c is done no no they are people they need to deal with them right show genuine love and care secondly don't be judgmental and of people and criticize their world views and religions now don't condemn people don't feel that you are or you and i as believers are better than them just because we believe in jesus no don't condemn their religion how can you bow down before this or how can you believe this it doesn't make sense that is condemning now they can condemn us also how can you believe in the cross somebody who died 2000 more than 2000 years back right so when we are engaging with somebody don't judge them don't judge them by their beliefs don't judge them by their looks don't judge them by what they understand by their knowledge nothing right uh, once they encounter jesus they will come to understand what pleases him what doesn't please him they will learn and i always uh, and as a church we always stick by this they shall know the truth the truth will set you free there will be people who will come with all kinds of things don't have to point out what wrong they are doing but you can point out what the scripture says once they become a believer they will understand okay this pleases god this doesn't please god so i have to live a life that pleases god very simple right avoid arguments now as you're sharing the gospel there will be sometimes it gets into arguments heated arguments no my god is better no what you are you're, you're saying is wrong now it's good to have debates there's a difference between debate and argument the moment you feel a debate is getting into a heated argument stop and move on do not continue that conversation right just stop it you can come back later in the right time when everything is a little bit cooler come back and you can pull up that discussion right it's not it's not a time where we find out okay i i won the discussion it's not about that our goal is to bring people to christ right lastly don't let people's negative response pull you down even if people respond negatively they say you know your what you're saying is not right they don't believe stay strong stay in the lord the joy of the lord is my say that together the joy of the lord one more time that's it okay so people will agree people will disagree the joy of the lord is your strength right so we'll stop here we'll come back next class and we'll get into chapter 6 right god bless thank you